Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 37 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about details view in ASP.NET. Just like grid view control, details view is also a data bound control. Details view is usually used to display one row at a time. Let's understand this with an example. In MySQL Server database, I have TBL employee table, which has got ID, first name, last name, city, gender, etc. There are a lot of columns in this table. Now, Within the grid view control, I don't want to display all of these columns. I just want to display three columns, ID, first name, and city columns. And then this grid view should also display a select button. Now when I select an employee, for the selected employee, we want to display all the columns within details view, as you can see here. Look at this. At the moment in the grid view control, I have John's record selected, number three. Look at that. Within the details, we have his ID, first name, last name, city, gender, every column from TBL employee table. Let's see how to achieve this. Obviously, we need a grid view control and a details view control on the web form. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's drag and drop a grid view control. Let's auto format that. Let's select brown sugar scheme. Now let's drag and drop details view control onto the web form. Let's auto format that as well and choose brown sugar scheme. Obviously, since we have two data bound controls, let me drag and drop two SQL data source controls. Now first, let's configure SQL data source one control, which is going to act as data source for grid view one control. So configure data source, select your connection string, click next. The table is going to be TBL employee. Now, I don't want to select all the rows from TBL employee because, you know, within the grid view control, I just need three columns, ID, first name, and city. So I am just going to select those three columns within SQL data source one control because this is going to be the data source for grid view one control. Click next, test your query, finish. Now let's associate SQL data source one with grid view one control. Now, look at this. We should allow the users to be able to select an employee row. So obviously we should enable selection on grid view one control. So from grid view tasks, enable selection, you know, check that box. All right. So we are done configuring grid view one control. Now let's configure SQL data source two control. Obviously this is going to act as data source for details view control. So let me configure this, select your connection string from web.config file, click next. The table is again going to be TBL employee. Now within details view, we want to show all the columns of the selected employee. So obviously the query will be select star from TBL employee. But when we execute this query, it's going to return all the columns as well as all the rows. But we don't want all the rows because we are going to display only one row at a time within the details view control. So obviously there should be a where clause by which we can filter. So I click on the where clause, so this is very important, add where clause. So how are we going to filter the rows that we are going to retrieve, you know, for SQL data source two control based on the row that we have selected within the grid view control. Okay, so I'm going to filter that based on, you know, the employee ID, the ID column. So the column is going to be ID and that should be equal to a value that is going to come from a control on this web form. So the source is going to be another control. So select control as that. And then which control is that? It's going to be grid view one control. Look at that. ID is equal to grid view one dot selected value. Click add. Click OK. So click next and we can test our query. Since there is a parameter there, we need to supply a value for that. For example, if I pass ID as one, and click OK, we should get all the columns of employee ID is equal to one. Finish. Now let's associate SQL Data Source 2 control with our details of view one control. OK, there we go. All right, let's go ahead and run this. At this point, obviously, when the grid view first renders, you know, no row will be selected within the grid view one control. And look at this, this this doesn't look right. You know, since I don't have any row selected within the grid view control, look at what's how a details view is rendered. It's 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 rendered as a simple colored box, and we don't want that to be happening. But then look at that. As soon as I select an employee row, you know, everything is back to normal. But even on the initial get request, you know, I don't want that colored box to be displayed, which means when the page initially loads up, 
you know we don't want to show details view control so anytime I select an employee uh, you know if the selected row within grid view one control is not now then only then go ahead and render details view control so obviously the, f the thing that first comes to our mind is within the page load event if within the grid view one control if selected row is not equal to null meaning if we have a row selected within the grid view control then I want the details view one control to be visible else if it is null then we don't want that control to be visible so I'm setting the visibility of that control to false now with this change let me go ahead and run this but we will still have the problem and then we'll see how to fix that okay so this is good on the initial page load we don't have details view rendered but we have another problem here when I select an employee row look at this I'm going to select Tom's row but do I have that rendered no but now when I actually select you know Pam's record everything is working fine as expected okay why is that that's because when I select an employee row on the page load you know we, we don't have anything selected because the selection happens after the post back okay that's why you know it doesn't work as expected because we are checking it in the page load event now we have discussed about you know the events in the page lifecycle of a web application ASP.NET video tutorial so if you're new to that please watch that video now obviously to make this work in the right way I will have to move this code to page underscore pre-render event because pre-render happens after post back event and by that point you know you have the selected value of grid view one populated correctly so what I'm going to do is I'm make, going to make a copy of this one and make use of page pre-render event okay so we can get rid of the code that's there in page load so now let's go ahead and run this obviously when the web form initially loads up selected value property of grid view control will be null so nothing is displayed now I select for example John look at that as soon as I select John I have that there I select Tom everything is working fine as expected so I select Tom so Tom's record is displayed alright now details view can also be used to perform insert edit and delete operations as well we'll discuss about them in our upcoming video sessions on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.